Hello to all the matriculants out there. Um, today I just want us, I want us to, to look at the menstrual cycle, grade 12 life sciences. My name is Bangani Timela Sibego. Now, we're gonna look at the menstrual cycle because you're gonna be tested on it when it comes to the exam. It's very important um, to know this chapter because you know the examiners, they're gonna ask you about it. There's no way that they won't ask you about this. So it's very important for you guys to understand the menstrual cycle. Now, let us just look at our lesson plan or what I'm going to discuss with you guys today. Um, we're going to look at what is menstrual cycle or define menstrual cycle. And then we're going to look at um, the pituitary gland or what we call a hypophysis. And then we're going to look at the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle. So these cycles are part of the menstrual cycle. Now we're going to look at also the hormonal regulation of the menstrual cycle. And then we're going to look at them or explain the negative feedback mechanism. And then we're going to define and explain ovulation, fertilization, and implantation. And then last but not least, we're going to look at um, the fetus or the structure of the fetus inside the uterus. Now, what is the menstrual cycle? Or what is the definition of menstrual cycle? Now, in simple terms, guys, the menstrual cycle is a series of events, meaning it's, it's like um, events that follow each other. It's a series, it's a, it's a sequence of events that occur in the female body to prepare the female body for possible pregnancy. And it takes an average of about 28 days, but it differs in every woman. Some they take 22 days, some it takes, to some women it takes 22 days, to some women it takes 32 days. Now it depends. Now, remember this process, guys, or this cycle only happens to females so it happens in the female body and then the menstrual cycle guys is divided into two important parts we have the ovarian cycle and we have got the uterine cycle but guys before we go further i want us to 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 to, to discuss um shortly or briefly a very important blend in our system in our bodies which plays a very like a very important um role now, what hormone I want, uh, what gland I want us to discuss is the pituitary gland, what we call also the hypophysis. Now, what is a pituitary gland or what is a hypophysis? It is actually called a mustard gland because it has a very important role in our bodies because it controls many other hormone glands in the body. Now, it is P-shaped and then it is found at the base of our brain here which is pink in color. This is our pituitary gland. This gland is very important for you guys to understand. But I think for now, what you need to know is where it is located. And you must know the name of this gland because it plays a very important role in our systems or in our bodies. And I think I'm gonna discuss it further when we do the endocrine system. Now, let us just move forward. Today we're doing basically D, menstrual cycle now since i told you guys that the menstrual cycle is divided into two parts we have the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle now we're going to look at the ovarian cycle now why do we call it the ovarian cycle now in simple terms we call it the ovarian cycle because this cycle only occurs in the ovaries of a woman that's it simple like that now what happens is that the pituitary gland or the hypophysis, it secretes a very important um, hormone, which is called FSH in abbreviation, but it's called the follicle stimulating hormone in food. And then this hormone stimulates the development of a primary follicle in the ovaries. And the developing follicle secretes estrogen, which thickens the uterine wall. Why does it 
thicken the uterine wall. It prepares um, the female reproductive system for pregnancy. It prepares the endometrium or the uterine wall for pregnancy or implantation, which is something I'm gonna discuss later. Now, this pituitary gland, after secreting the FSH and after the, it has um, stimulated um, the, 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 the developing of a follicle, now, and the, the, the pituitary gland again, it starts to secrete the luteinizing hormone or LH during the 14th day of the menstrual cycle. And then this luteinizing hormone, it plays a very important role because it causes what we call ovulation, which is something I'm gonna discuss later. But now, what you need to know is that the ovulation is actually a process that occurs in the female reproductive system, whereby now an egg cell is released from the ovary and then it goes into the fallopian tube. That's it, that's ovulation. Now, the remains of the graphene follicle, or a graphene follicle, guys, it's a matured or a completely developed uh, follicle. Now, this developed follicle, it develops into corpus luteum, or what we call a yellow body, which secretes progesterone, which is a very important hormone as well, which plays a very important role like the oestrogen that we discussed. It also thickens what? The endometrium or the uterine wall or the lining of the uterus, the inner lining of the uterus. Now, progesterone, as it is produced in our in a female reproductive system, what happens is that it inhibits the production of the follicle stimulating hormone. Why does it have to inhibit it or stop it from being produced? It's because now we have already produced an ovum. A woman has already produced an ovum or an egg. Therefore, we don't need any other egg. Remember, a woman only produces one egg per month. Now, after the development of the first egg and after ovulation has taken place, there's no need to produce another egg. Okay? Now, the progesterone, it inhibits the pituitary gland from producing the follicle stimulating hormone. Now, when fertilization does not take place, the corpus luteum, it starts to degenerate or it starts to dissipate or disappear it starts to get smaller and smaller. It starts to fade away and it stops the production of, of progesterone. And then we have got um, the pituitary gland again now. What happens is that once fertilization does not take place, the pituitary gland is no longer inhibited and FSH is secreted again to cause what? The development of a new follicle the following month because now fertilization did not take place. So we need to produce another egg and that egg is gonna what? Prepare for possible pregnancy. Now there's gonna be what fertilization happening again. But if it doesn't happen again, now the pituitary gland will produce another egg. It's gonna, sorry, it's gonna produce and secrete the follicle stimulating hormone, which stimulates the developing of, a, of an ovum in the ovaries. Now, looking at the uterine cycle. Now, this is called the uterine cycle because it is a cycle that occurs in the female uterus. Simple like that. It's called the uterine cycle because it happens or it occurs inside the uterus of a female. Now, from day one to day 14, estrogen produced by the developing follicle causes the initial thickening of the uterine wall or endometrium. Remember, in the ovarian cycle, the developing follicle, it's, it, it secretes what? It secretes this estrogen. Now, in the uterus, this estrogen, what it does, it thickens the endometrium or the inner line, lining of the, of the uterus or what we call the uterine wall, preparing it for implantation or pregnancy. And then also, the progesterone that is produced inside the ovaries by the corpus luteum, it plays a very important role in the uterus as well because it thickens also the endometrium, the lining of the, of the uterus. Now, if fertilization does not take place, 
the corpus luteum it degenerates and stops producing what progesterone remember guys corpus luteum it produces progesterone now if it degenerates therefore there won't be any production of progesterone therefore the endometrium won't be thick or the thickness of the endometrium is not going to be maintained then menstruation starts to occur why because the egg that was produced now has not been fertilized therefore we need to take out that egg now what happens is what we call menstruation what is menstruation menstruation is the discharge of blood and mucosal tissue from the uterine wall through the vagina now the egg is released through a process called menstruation which is also called the period now if fertilization did not take place now the estrogen that is produced by the developing follicles is secreted again and then once it is secreted again now the thickening of the endometrium starts again now the process starts all over again but i'm going to explain this further when we look at the diagrams it's easier when we look at the diagrams guys now looking at our next slide now we're going to look at the progression of the menstrual cycle and the hormones contributing to it or we're going to look at the the hormonal regulation of the menstrual cycle now what you need to understand is this structure here on your left it's on my left as i'm looking at the the screen now this is a very important important structure and you need to know what happens inside this structure now what happens here is what we call the ovarian cycle which is part of the menstrual cycle now here you look at look at the primary follicle there on your screen now this primary uh, follicle it plays a, a very important role after it is developed what happens is that estrogen starts to be secreted by this primary follicle by and then it goes it becomes it grows and then it becomes what a secondary follicle as it develops it becomes tertiary follicle until it becomes a fully matured or a completely developed um, follicle which is called the graphene follicle now as it grows as it gets bigger more and more of estrogen of estrogen is produced and then as more and more of estrogen is produced the endometrium wall becomes thicker and thicker preparing it for pregnancy if it's going to happen now after the graphene follicle has been formed or created what happens is a process called ovulation ovulation is what is the release of an egg cell from the graphene follicle in the ovary into the fallopian tube this is a very important uh, a process you might be asked what is ovulation and then this process guys remember it happens during the 14th day of the menstrual cycle that's when the egg is released now after the egg has been released it goes into the fallopian tube or what we call the oviduct now this empty graphene follicle now it starts to be formed it starts to form what we call a corpus luteum so the corpus luteum it's a very important structure because it secretes what we call progesterone which is another hormone that thickens the lining of the inner uh, uterus or the endometrium or the uterine wall as it gets bigger and bigger it releases more and more of progesterone which prepares for implantation or pregnancy now there's a very important hormone that plays a very important role in ovulation that hormone is what we call the luteinizing hormone the luteinizing hormone is produced um the day before the 14th day uh, on the 13th day it is produced or during the 14th day it is produced and then it stimulates what 
ovulation, this part, this process that occurs here, the release of an egg from an ovary into the fallopian tube. Now, the progesterone that is produced here, remember guys, it does what? It thickens what? The endometrium or the uterine wall. But now, if fertilization does not take place, meaning the sperm cell won't fertilize the egg, or maybe what happens is that the woman does not uh, perform any sexual intercourse. Therefore, this, a, this um, corpus luteum is going to, to disappear now, or it's going to get smaller and smaller, or degenerates or dissipates, and then it becomes smaller. So it degenerates, and then the amount of progesterone produced starts to decrease. And then once the progesterone that is produced by this corpus luteum decreases, it means now that thickened endometrium cannot be maintained. There's no, not enough progesterone to thicken what? the endometrium. Therefore, the endometrium starts to be shed or menstruation occurs to release what? The egg that was not fertilized out of the, the female reproductive system. Now, you also need to understand this diagram here. You might be also given this diagram during your exam. Now, you need to understand this diagram very clearly, guys. It's the very same thing that I've just explained, but now it's in a form of a diagram. It's easy to understand if you look at the diagram carefully. Now, looking at our diagram, we have two phases here. We have the follicular phase, where there's the development of the follicle, and then we've got the luteal phase, which means the development of the corpus luteum or the yellow body. Now, remember the first part, always remember this guys, the first part of the menstrual cycle is always menstruation. That's where the menstrual cycle starts. It starts with menstruation from the previous menstrual cycle. If the, during the previous menstrual cycle, no fertilization took place, what happens is menstruation the egg is released out of the body through what through the vagina in a process called menstruation now during menstruation since fertilization is not taking place we will need what we'll need another egg therefore the pituitary gland which is located at the base of our brain starts to produce and secretes a hormone called the follicle stimulating hormone this hormone here you see, the level of this hormone here, they start to become higher. It starts to rise. Now, this follicle-stimulating hormone, it stimulates what? The development of a follicle in the ovaries. Now, what happens is, as this follicle develops, as it becomes bigger and bigger, another hormone is secreted by what? It's secreted by the follicle that is developing. That hormone is what we call the estrogen. That estrogen, as it is produced, it becomes more and more, or it becomes higher and higher. It increases in amount, or the levels of estrogen, they increase as the follicle gets bigger and bigger until it becomes a graphene follicle. This estrogen, guys, again, what it does, it thickens the endometrium in the uterus to prepare for pregnancy or implantation. Now, during the 14th day or the day before the 14th day, another hormone is secreted by your, your pituitary gland. That hormone is called the luteinizing hormone. What does it do? It stimulates what ovulation. It releases the egg out of this graphene follicle in the ovaries into the fallopian tube to prepare the egg for fertilization. Now, at this point here, during the 14th or the 13th day, the amount of luteinizing hormone produced, it increases. And then after, here you see, after ovulation has occurred, the amount of this hormone starts to decrease because already ovulation has taken place. You don't, you don't need it anymore since its role it's done, which is ovulation. Now, 
after ovulation, the luteal phase starts now. Or the production or sorry, or the development of the corpus luteum starts. Now, as the the, 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 the the corpus luteum is developed. It what it secretes what we call progesterone. This is another important hormone. So as you can see here, looking at the blue line or curve. Now what happens is that the amount or the levels of progesterone secreted by the corpus luteum increases. As they increase, the thickening of the endometrium also increases. It prepares the endometrium for pregnancy. Now, if fertilization does not take place, maybe due um, to the fact that the woman did not have any sexual in intercourse or copulation, now the corpus luteum it starts to degenerate. It starts to become smaller and smaller and disappears. Now, as it becomes smaller, the amount of progesterone produced they decrease because now it become, it's becoming smaller. Therefore, the amount of progesterone, they start to what? To drop. As they drop now, the, 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 the wall, the uterine wall or the endometrium, is not maintained. It does not become more thicker and thicker. And then if this endometrium is not maintained, therefore, a process called menstruation is going to take place now. This part, it starts to go again to this to the beginning menstruation starts to happen and then the not the egg that was not fertilized or the unfertilized egg is released out of the human body of the female now this case is very easy to understand remember we have the follicular phase whereby the development of the follicle happens and then we have the luteal phase whereby the development of a corpus luteum occurs, or what we call the yellow body. Now, moving forward. Oh, before I forget, guys, remember ovulation happens on the 14th day. You can be asked that and so forth. Now, as we go forward, we are now going to look at our next slide, which is ovulation, fertilization, and implantation. Or we're simply going to look at the development of. Um, of a zygote, yes. Now, as I've been telling you guys, ovulation refers to the release of an egg or an ovum in females, and it usually occurs during the 14th day of the menstrual cycle. Very simple. Now, after ovulation has occurred, if copulation okay, fertilization is going to happen. Now, what is fertilization? In simple terms, fertilization is the fusion of a male and a female sex cells or gametes to form a zygote. And then this fertilization or this process, it occurs in the fallopian tube only, nowhere else. Now, after fertilization has occurred, the process called implantation follows. And then what is implantation in simple terms? Implantation is the attachment of the fertilized egg to the uterine wall or the endometrium, which occurs approximately six to seven days after fertilization. Now, looking at this diagram on your right, this diagram actually explains what I've just explained here, but now it's in a form of a diagram. Now, Remember, this is the female reproductive system. Now, here you can see we have what? An ovary. Inside the ovary, we have what? Developing follicles. We also have what? The corpus luteum or the yellow body. And then there you can see an egg is being released via the process called ovulation. Now, after ovulation has occurred, fertilization results if copulation takes place. And then the fertilized egg, it starts to form what? A zygote. And then that zygote, it starts to do what? To, to, to form a two cell the structure here. It starts to, 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 to divide. Mitosis occur here. The cells, one cell 
becomes two cells, and then the two cells divide to form four cells, and then the four cells divide to form eight cells until what we call a marula is formed. And then that marula develops into what we call a blastocyst. And then that blastocyst is what is going to be implanted, implanted on your endometrium. Then pregnancy results. And then now the embryo is going to develop into the fetus after 12 weeks. And then the fetus, it grows and grows for nine months until the baby is fully developed for, for labor, until labor takes place, until the mother gives birth to the child. Now, moving forward. Now, we're going to look at the fetus in the uterus, or we're going to look at the structure of the, of the fetus in the uterus. Now, you need to be able to know how to, to label this structure. It usually appears as it is here on our picture here, or on our diagram here. Now, you need to understand or label, you need to be able to label, sorry. You need to be able to label this structure. It's very important to label, to label this structure because you might be asked to, to, to label it. But you might not be asked to label everything here. But what is very important is the placenta here, the blackish part. This is a very important um, structure. Now, let us look at what is a placenta. A placenta is, a, is an interface between the mother and the developing fetus or the unborn baby. It attaches the uterus to the uterine wall or the endometrium. And also it provides nutrients to the fetus and allows the fetus to transfer waste products to the mother's blood via the umbilical cord. Okay, now the umbilical cord is what is here, this part here, this pathway here, this tube here is what we call an umbilical cord. It's look, it looks like a cord, hence it's called an umbilical cord. This cord transfers waste products from the child into the mother's blood via the placenta. In the placenta, a process called gaseous exchange occurs here. And in the placenta, it's where we get your your, your, your umbilical arteries and your umbilical veins for gaseous exchange and for the transmission of what? Of nutrients from the mother to the child because the child needs what? The child needs food so that the child is able to grow. And then now the child is inside what? Is inside an amnion. This is an amnion. I haven't labeled it here. This outer membrane that covers the child is the amnion and then inside the amnion we find what we call an amniotic fluid this fluid is very important because it protects the fetus by doing what by cushioning the baby from outside pressures so this fluid it acts as a shock absorber it protects the, sh the child and then now Looking at our last structure here is what we call the uterine, uterine wall or what we call the uterus. I think this is our uterine wall, guys. Sorry, my label there is wrong. My label is very wrong here. Now, this part here, sorry, pardon me for this. So this part here is what we call the, in, the uterus. This uterus, it plays a very important role because during labor, it contracts to cause the cervix to dilate. This cervix, you know the cervix, guys, we did the, the female reproductive system, the doorway to the, to the uterus. Now, this doorway to the uterus, it starts to dilate. And then as it dilates, when the mother pushes, the child goes outside, the, the, outside, yeah, the, 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 the child gets out of the woman's reproductive system and then it goes to the outside environment. And then that's how the baby is, is born. Simple as that. Guys, I'm done for today. I hope you understood everything. Thank you for watching. Please watch more videos. Thank you so much. And if you have questions, please don't forget to, to ask your questions. Don't hesitate to ask, and I'm going to explain everything that you're going to ask. Thank you so much for watching. Please keep on watching these videos. They are very important because they're going to help you to be able to tackle those exam questions. Good luck.